windows on this door to fry our garden up. My curse on will is fixed, despite my vigilance and all my searching for your valuables. You still have hidden treasures in this room. When these were secreted, there will be more. Oh, such insolence! That chest is where all my lady's secrets are! Precisely those I hope to find. Those papers are of no importance. They're just exercises meant to take away the gloom in this sad jail. When I don't mind, are wicked they create. Those papers are in French! So much the worse. That is the language of England's enemies. But those are just drafts for letters meant for the English Queen. I shall deliver them. Look, what's this? A royal diadem encrusted richly with precious stones, embellished with the lilies of the kings of France. We take it through it, put it with the rest. Oh, such shameful force that we must suffer. But she still has possessions. She is dangerous. In her hand, everything becomes a weapon. Have pity, sir. Do not deprive our lives of these last jewels. In her misery, the sight of former glory gives you so much joy. Why have taken everything from her? They're in good hands and in good time. We'll be restored to her. Deny. 
For years now, I have been without the comforts of my church. Elizabeth may have robbed me of my crown, my freedom, and she may now threaten my life. But she cannot want to bar the gates of heaven to my soul. When that I leave his arm, the village pastor. I do not want a village pastor. I want a priest from my own church. Furthermore, I demand some notaries and clerks to make my last testament. I feel my days are numbered. I am a dying woman. Uh, that is your privilege, my lady. The Queen of England will not enrich herself by robbing you. The slow effect of grief may well be hastened by one quick blow, I cannot be certain. Therefore, I wish to make my last testament and dispose of my possessions. You need not doubt that justice will be done. Where are my servants and my ladies? I can do well without their service, but I would like to be assured that they, for being faithful, do not want to suffer. Your servants have been well cared for, my lady. Sir Avius, Sir Avius, you leave me once again without a word to comfort my troubled heart. Your informers have been vigilant. I have been kept away from the world. No message reaches me across these prison walls. My fate lies in the hands of enemies. It has been a month painfully long since your forty commissioners have set up court here. It put me quite unprepared and without aid of counsel before this point I heard of jury. Stunned and confused, I was forced to answer grave and cleverly concocted charges. Like ghosts, they came and went. Since then, all have been silent. Now I try to read upon your face. Who won? My innocence? The fervor of my friends or the nefarious advice of enemies? Now, break your silence. Tell me what I must hope, what I must fear. Make your peace with God. I ask for heaven's mercy, but I am also asking for justice for my judges here on earth. Justice will be done. A sentence been announced. I do not know. Am I to be condemned? My lady, I know nothing. In England, one is fond of acting with this bench. Are my murderers to surprise me as my judges did? Assume that is the case. Thus, death will find you better armed than justice did. No, oh, no, my lord, no. I will not be surprised. I can imagine how a court in Westminster led by Burley's hate can dare to judge. For I know too well how England's queen may dare to act. For the rulers of England, there is no restraint but parliament and their own conscience. What justice has decreed before the world had clearly said their might will execute. Uncle! Uncle! We have been looking for you! I value what makes him unbearable to you, my lady. No, he is not one of those young fools who melt when women shed deceitful tears. He has just returned from Paris and from Reims, but has brought back his faithful English heart. Your wiles and charms, my lady, fortunately, will be lost on him. Confidence in Mortimer who brings you this. He is 
like I saw how you suffer and saw the gentleness and composure with which you bear indignities. Now there will be the moment of decision looms, a danger grows with every hour. I can delay no longer, can no longer hide the frightful news. A sentence been announced. Please, feel free to speak. I will bear it. Yes, it has. The 42, your judges, have pronounced you guilty. For the House of Lords, the Commons, and the City of London are insistent that the sentence be swiftly carried out. The Queen Elizabeth alone still hesitates not to make meaning to be sure of human kindness or of mercy, but waiting cunningly to be prevailed upon.
is that enjoying your law's benefits. I hardly know your law. I am not a citizen of England's realm. I am a foreign queen and free. Tell me, do you believe that bearing a royal name implies the right of sowing discord wherever you go with impunity? How safe would any kingdom be? I am not trying to evade your justice. It is the judges who dispense them that I reject. The judges? Why? Why? Are they some nameless outcasts gathered for the rabble? Are not these judges the most noble men in all of England? Men free enough to speak the truth, my lady. Men far above the fear of kings or of miserable bribery. The, the Archbishop of Canterbury, my lady. The, the Earl Privy Seal, Lord Shrewsbury, the Arvalian Howard, the Lord Admiral, maybe. Could England's ruler have done any more than choose from all her realm the most noble of men to be your judges in this royal suit? My lord, I, I am amazed at your eloquence. It has always been my misfortune. How can I, uh, an unlearned woman, compete with such a skillful orator? Well then, those men there are my judges. You, my lord, I will be just in judging you. I hope you will be just with me. I hear you have your queen, your country's interest at heart, that you are vigilant, untiring, and incorruptible. I will believe it. You do what is best for queen and country. But that is why you have to be on your guard. Do not mistake your country's interest for justice. I am sure that there are men as honorable as yourself among my churches, but they are Protestants. Fanatics of England's realm who judge me. A papist and the Queen of Scots now. No Briton ever judged the Scots for wise. That is why it has been tradition since our father's ancient time that Englishmen may never testify before the court against a Scot, nor Scots against Englishmen. Now necessity has created this odd rule, but there is wisdom in old tradition, and we must honor them, my lord. One scepter rules this eye. And you meant you, a steward, meant to bring this happy fortune of unity to our realm. <laughs> but why not admit it? Yes, I know she hopes. It was my hope that I could bring together these great nations underneath that all of tree, free and happy. It was my hope that I could unite the crowns of England and Scotland in one peace. Well, you chose an evil path to reach your goal when you chose to inflame our realm, when you chose to climb the throne amidst the raging fires of your civil war. Good God, I never wanted that. Whenever did I want that? Show me your proof. Where are your documents? You saw them in court. We also have proof, my lady, that you negotiated with His Majesty's Spanish ambassador. Oh, keep to the point, my lord. And that you schemed against the state religion. <clears throat> and that you formed a league with all the kings in Europe for making war against Elizabeth. Suppose I did. I did not. But suppose I did. You are holding me prisoner against the law of nations. I did not come here with sword in hand. I came here a supplicant seeking the ancient laws of hospitality. I came here to throw myself into the arms of Elizabeth, my cousin. But I was chained and seized by those whom I beseeched for help. No, what matters between myself and England is not right, but might. I would not invoke the awful right of force. It does not favor prisoners, my lady. Elizabeth is powerful and I am weak. Let her use her power then. Let her kill me. Let me be the sacrifice that guarantees her throne. If she does this, then she has to admit she exercises force, not justice. <laughs> to murder me, she has the power but not to judge me.
unbreakable is her proud heart. She knows full well that England's queen is full of doubt. Our fears make her courageous. And so? And so. You let her be. No! Or let her. She must not live. That is what troubles our queen. That is why sleep evades her bed at night. She knows the steward has to die. Yet she knows she must not give the order herself. If only she had more attentive servants. Attentive. If she had men who were willing to interpret silent orders for her. Silent orders? If only she had men who, if given treacherous snakes to God, would not protect the enemy entrusted to their care as if it was a precious gem. With the Queen's good name and blameless reputation, our precious gems indeed. One cannot be too careful with them, sir. When she was removed from the Shrewsbury's domain and Sir Aeneas Paulette was assigned, well, one thought that here was a man. I hope, my lord, one thought that the most difficult assignment should be put into the cleanest hand. Do not suggest, my lord, that I owe my appointment to anything but my spotless reputation. The rumor could be spread that she was ill. She was weakening finally that she had succumbed. For that she would fade from people's memories. They would forget, and your reputation would still be untarnished. But that my conscience. For now, she is entrusted to my care. You may be sure that I will keep her safe, so that she will neither cause nor suffer harm. Oh, 
not in the own sphere. A proud example. It is true, no man on earth is there that you give up your freedom for his sake. But if there is one man whom birth, exalted station, heroic virtues, and man... The marriage with a royal son of France would greatly honor me, my dear ambassador. There is no doubt of that. And I admit it frankly, if it must be, there is nothing I can do but yield to the insistence of my people, and they'll be stronger, I'm afraid, than I. I cannot think of any prince in Europe to whom I would with less reluctance sacrifice my greatest treasure, my freedom. Now let this confession be not. Oh, to have this hope is past less. Still, it is only hope. My master is a king of hearts and wish for more. What does he want? A queen is, after all, no different from any man's wife. The symbols are the same, so are the duties and servitude which they imply. A ring makes marriages, and rings make chains. Take this. It is a present for his highness. It is not yet a chain. It is a me. Although, in time, it may become a serpent that dies. Kneeling before you, I accept this present. It's the name of the king of France, and in his stead, I press this kiss of homage on my monarch's hand. Yes. Lord Lester. My queen. Permit me, my lord. Pass on this decoration, as I now decorate you and accept you into the duties of my order. May all suspicion fade between our two nations, and may a bond of cross henceforth unite the crown of England and of France. <laughs>
upon the wave of changeable opinion, the verdict of the court is forced about. Don't say that you are forced, that you obey necessity and the insistence of your people, or you can prove at any moment, if you will, that you are free to act the way you please. Try it. Declare that you loathe bloodshed and that you wish to save your cousin's life. You are a most devoted advocate of her, an enemy of England and my own. I do prefer a counselor who has my interest at heart. Mary Stewart was denied an advocate, and nobody wished to speak on her behalf and thus incur her wrath. Give your permission then to an old man who, close to them, is no longer enticed by worldly hopes to be her advocate. Now you yourself have never seen her face to face. She strikes no chord of friendship in your heart. I'm not trying to excuse her guilt. They say that she allowed her husband to be murdered, and it is true that she married his assassin. Oh, this is a heinous crime, but it was done in an unhappy dark epoch amidst the pressing fear of civil war. Oh, yes, a fragile thing indeed, this woman. No, women are not weak. Their strong souls among the female sex do not speak of their weakness in my presence. At a tender age, Mary Stewart was transplanted to French soil and to accord were nothing but frivolity and thoughtless gaiety surrounded her. Inebriated by their unending peace and blinded by the glitter of their vices, she never heard a sober voice of the torrent of corruption swept her away. And secret, beautiful, the blue mark showed that of all other women and that vain procession, no less than her exalted birth. But let yourself, Lord Shrewsbury. Remember, we are engaged in serious counsel. Her charms indeed must be extraordinary if they can fan such flames in old men's hearts. <laughs> Lord Lester, you are longer silent. Does that make Lord Shrewsbury wag his tongue, my lord? Your Majesty, I've been silent in astonishment, <coughs> amazed that one makes bold to fill your ear with horror stories, fairy tales that strike the gullible and foolish rabble on the streets with fear. Now it's being seriously argued that you're exalted counsel by wise men. I'm speechless, I admit. The Mary, Queen of Scots, without a country, who could not maintain herself on her own little throne, whom her own vassals mock and outcast, should be so dangerous to you now that she is in prison. What do these people want to so impatiently torment you while you're still alive, a mother heir? Since you couldn't went soon enough, because they say you have to save church and state. My queen. You stand before us in the bloom of you. Mary Stuart fades a little closer to her grave each day. I hope by God that you will walk for many years upon her grave. There is no need for you to push her into it. My lord, that was not always your argument. As a member of a court of law, it's true I voted for her then. But I speak differently as a member of the Privy Council. Here law is not the issue, only interest. Is this the time to be afraid of Mary Stuart? Now that she has been abandoned by her last protector friends? Now that you are about to give your hand to a delighted prince? And now there is hope of seeing soon a newly founded family of English kings again? Why kill her when she's already dead? Contempt feels close to her. Watch out, that should be resurrected by compassion. My counsel, therefore, is to leave the sentence by which she is condemned to die in full effect. To let her live, but live beneath the executioner's appraised axe, and let her drop if one man live his sword for her. Above your views, my lord, I am most grateful for your zeal. And now, with any of God who likes the way of kings, I shall examine your opinions and choose what I believe Best. Your Majesty. Oh, here comes the dangerous threat. Ferenius, what news have you for us? Most gracious Majesty, my nephew, 
but recently returned from Parkland Travels, has come to kneel and pay you homage. May you find favor in your eyes and may the sun of your affection warm him. Oh, there, my gracious queen, may happiness and glory crown her head. Arise. I welcome you to England, son. I am told that your travels with you to France, you were in Reims and stayed in Rome. Tell me what plots of Rendy's are attached. God confound them and reverse against the archer's breast. The arrows fly the aim at you, my gracious Sophia. Did you see that spinner of intrigues, Archbishop of Rosie? I came to know all Scottish exiles of dreams forged their conspiracies against this heart. I worked my way into their confidence in order to discover their deeds. <laughs> they even trusted him with secret letters addressing code to Mary, Queen of Scots, which loyally he handed us. Your Majesty. What is that paper? It is a letter from the Queen of Scots. Give that to me. I beg your pardon, Lord High Treasurer. <laughs> she asked me to remit it to the Queen. Although she thinks that I'm her enemy, I only hate her lies. What I can reconcile with my responsibilities, I'll do for her. Your Majesty. She did not like a mere what it contains. She desires a favor. She wants to see the queen. Oh, never. Why not? That would not be improper. She's forfeited the right to see the queen. Mary Stuart thirsts for blood. She's instigated murder. A loyal subject would never give such treacherous advice. But if the queen desires to grant that favor, would you attempt to check that gentle impulse? She is condemned. Her head is on the block. It is not fitting for a queen's exalted eyes to fall upon a woman doomed to die. And she can never be admitted to the queen's presence. Once she's admitted to the royal presence, the sentence never could be carried out. The royal presence implies a royal pardon. Oh, what is man? Excuse me, gentlemen. It rends my heart. My soul is bleeding, sadness seizes me. So I perceive the instability of all that's human and how close the frightful fate of humans passed by me. God touched your heart, your majesty. Obey this heavenly command. The time has come to end Mary Stuart's trials. Descend upon her dungeon's gloomy tomb, the radiant apparition of an angel. Reach out to lift the deeply fallen woman. Majesty, be steadfast. Do not let sentiment, however praiseworthy, take from you your royal prerogative to do a thing which surely will be necessary. My lords, and as a go beyond her confidence, the queen is wise and is in no need of us in choosing what her dignity requires of her. My lords, leave me alone. We shall find ways to do what mercy and necessity impose on us. Yes, I meant to leave the matter to the law and not to solve 
sword in my hands. The Lord's act of what have I gained? The sentence must be carried out. And it is I who must command that it be done. And as acknowledge it, I cannot bear it. That is the worst. I be concerned about the like which an honest cause of yours. You do not know the world, Sir Mortimer. What one appears to be is judged by all, but no one judges what one is. No one will be persuaded of my right, and therefore I must seek to leave the part I play in Mary's death in time. It will perhaps be best. Certainly, that would be best. Oh, 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 oh. My good angel speaks through you. Continue that. Go on. You're a serious man. You think this? You're very different from your uncle. Did you uncover your desire to him? I did. I now regret it. He is so forgiven for his years, making too cautious. A daring deed needs youthful recklessness. May I? I lend my hand to you. But you must judge how you can say your name. Ah, oh, if one morning you would wake me with the news, your hated enemy, the Queen of Scots, expired last night. You may rely on me. When will my head rest peacefully on mine? Next new moon will end your fears. Farewell, Sir Mortimer. Do not feel grieved that my great gratitude to have to wear the cloak of night. The strongest and most tender bonds are tied by secrets held in common.
to what you've done not in. You did not worry to let them sentence her. You even voted for her death. And thought of it has been a constant karma just that she was removed from Shrewsbury's care, transferred to Potteray, and confided to the watchful guard of your uncle. All those were blocked. And I was to continue to play before the whole world the role of Mary's persecutor. You have me. <laughs> your noble confidence, my lord, deserves to be returned. I want to free the free Mary's court. That's why I'm here. The preparations have been made. Your powerful support the truth. What you say? You're fighting me. You are to get her out of prison. I have friends. All is in ready. You have a complex and confidence locked down. You do not make me a partner of your recklessness. To all your friends, of my secret. Don't be alarmed. Our plans were laid without her help, and so they would be carried out if she did not resist that you deliver her. Can you assure me that my name has never been mentioned in your league? Yes. Rest assured. But why so cautious now, my lord? Let me find her. You said you need to save and possess the queen, but now, the moment you discover unexpected friends, the, the moment that the means to do so brought you here down from heaven, you appear embarrassed more than over joy. Cannot be bound by force, it is too risky. It's all is dead. I am a ghast, young man, you frightened me. How far will your insanity have carried you consider well the risk? Someone's coming, go. My lord, Mary still holds. Must I return with everything? Free Mary, the vows of my eternal love. Make of yourself a her. I am not a messenger. Long. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Who was left on every topic? That was Mortimer. You seem quite happy. Something wrong, my love. To see you thus before me, yes, indeed. <laughs> I've never seen you looking so enchanting. <laughs> I'm, I'm blinded by your beauty, oh my God. <laughs> what do you say? Do I not have sufficient reason? As my eyes behold your charm, the nameless pain of my impending loss renews itself. What can you do? Your heart, your lovely self. The youthful arms of your impassioned husband will, will soon bring happiness to you, and he will own your undivided heart. It is of royal blood, that I am not. But no one in this world adores you more than I. A miserate with me instead of scolding me. I may not ask my heart. It would choose otherwise. Oh, how I envy women are allowed to choose the man they love. And Stuart had a privilege. She gave her hand to whom she gave her heart. To all the liberty and brain the well-filled cup of pleasure. Do not envy Mary Stewart. She now breaks from the cup of sorrow. Why do you all harass me to grant Mary Stewart's request to see me? What Mary requests as favor, grant her as punishment. The scaffolds would have pain her more than being overshadowed by your beauty. That is the way to murder, as once she meant to murder. For when she sees your beauty, guarded by your honor and asked by your unvarnished reputation, and her own throne shamelessly and carelessly away, exalted by the splendor of your crown and embellished now by tender hopes of marriage, ah, the hour of death has struck for her. If you face her this moment as you are, you will not live to see a finer hour. Now, no, not now. No, less than no. I must give it thought and talk to Bali. To Bali? <laughs> you can think of nothing but the welfare of this country. But your woman would also ask rights. A subtle point which you have to decide not a statesman. Yet statecraft could demand that you would see your cousin Mary Stewart. That by your generosity, Win the public mind. I cannot properly and decently confront a relative in want and shame. I am told that her surroundings are not regal. To see her in distress, I would feel as reproach. You don't even need to cross her threshold. Hear my counsel. It happens that today the hunt takes place and the way will leave past bothering you. And there she could be walking at the park while you, as if by chance, come up. Of course, it shouldn't seem deliberate, and if you do not wish, you need not even speak to her. Huh? Huh? <laughs> this is foolishness. This foolishness is yours, not mine. <laughs> oh. Today I cannot look as 
response to anything you might desire, Lord Lester. Because today I hurt you more than anyone. <laughs> Even if this is just a woman you want to Perfection shows itself by being pleased with brother. Yes, even though it may be wrong. No. <laughs> Respectfully, 
address her generosity, and don't stand on your rights on now. You must never look upon each other. Never. No good will come out of it. Not now, not ever. Wait till you see her face to face. I saw how much your letter touched her heart. Her eyes were filled with tears. She is not heartless and confident. That's why I hurry here to help you calm yourself and to prepare you. I've always looked upon you as my friend. Oh, why, why did they move me from your prison? Since then, I have been met with much adversity. Don't think of that. Think only that you must be humble when you meet the queen. Spurly with her, my dark angel. No one is with her but the Earl of Leicester. Leicester. Oh, you need not be afraid of him. He's not your enemy. It is his doing that he agreed to see you here. I thought so. What did you say, my lady? The Queen is here. What is the name of this respect? In a smoldering head. Our hungry mob used to go ahead to London. The people pushed their clothes in the streets to seek protection in this peaceful mob. Our people love me far too much. Their joy is too extravagant, they idolize me. That is the way to honor God, but not a golden queen. Lester. Oh, God. A woman with such a face cannot have a heart. Who is my wife? Your Majesty, you're at the fathering age. Who dare bring me here, Lord Lester? Your Majesty. It has happened, and now that heaven has guided your steps here, that generosity and pity for women. Please, Your Majesty, to look upon this most unfortunate of women who withers at your feet. Who was a gentleman who told me to expect a woman deeply bowed? This woman is full of pride, untractable for all her suffering. The heavens have decided on your favor, cousin. The victor's crown sits on your happy brow. I pray to God who has exalted you. Now, cousin, you too. Be generous. Do not let me lie here shamefully before you in the dust. Extend your hand. Embrace me from this abysmal fall. You are where you belong, my lady. And I praise God and thank him for his mercy that he has not seen fit to let me lie at your feet as you're lying now at mine. Do not forget how changeable our human fortunes are. The gods still live who avenge false pride. Respect and fear the terrifying powers that have sent me to my knees and at your feet. Before these witnesses, honor and be yourself. Do not disgrace or vilify the tune of blood that flows through my veins, O oh merciful God. You wish to speak to me, Lady Stuart? What do you wish to tell me? I will forget. I am queen, that you have gravely wronged me, and I will do my duty as your cousin. I offer you the consolation of my presence. I yield to insistence and impulse. Expose myself to justify the approach for having stood too low, for you remember you had plans for my assassination. How do I say this? How do I cleverly compose my words that I may move her but not hurt her? I am a queen, just like you. But you have made me your prisoner. I came here as supplicant, but you, Mocking the ancient laws of hospitality and in defiance of the laws of nation, entombed me in a dungeon.
tore my friends and serpents from my side, exposed me to this graceful want, arraigned me finally before an ignominious court. Enough of that! Beware once the cloak of 
I do not care. The world will see its day of doom approach before I shall renounce you.
You are still ambassadors. We will protect you for today. Well, I am glad to leave this country where facts are toys and the law of nations is trampled on. The king of France will seek his bloody revenge. Well, let him come here and take it. So, you dissolve the union now yourself, which without war, but be firm for you have sought. That would not earn the English gratitude, my lord. You might have saved yourself much trouble. My purposes were honest. God decreed there should be no marriage. I can see the secretive expression in your face. The well-known sign of two hot traitors. <laughs> this is the most perpetuous time for you, my lord. A monstrous crime has been committed, and mystery still surrounds the criminal. You'll be the all-important man, an atlas of the state, upon whose shoulders the entire weight of England rests. <laughs> I acknowledge you, my master. Why, your own eloquence has achieved a victory that mine never has. What are you saying? Was it not you who convinced the queen to go to Fotheringhay behind my back? Behind your back, indeed. I never tried to hide my actions from your scrutiny. Oh, you convinced the queen to go to Fotheringhay? Oh, no. Oh. Why, it was the queen who graciously agreed to guide you there. What are you driving at? I am driving at that woman that you let bring a queen in Fotheringhay. And I am driving at the noble triumph which you so thoughtfully prepared for the queen who trusted you in business. Lord Elizabeth, with what shameless impudence she was mocked, subjected to what merciless contempt. So this is the pity, the humanity, which suddenly overwhelmed you in the court. This is why Mary Stuart was so weak and so humble an opponent that killing her would be too good a death. Oh, that was a how finely old. A pity it was too finely old. Your point broke off. What impudence. Come with me to the Queen at once and repeat your accusations of her throne. Come, I'll meet you there. Oh, my lord. Make sure you have all your eloquence at your command. Are these torn asunder? My compassions are scattered. I'm 
on my way to Scotland. That is what I shall do. Hey, God! God! Arrest this traitor! God and well! An infamous conspiracy has been discovered, and I will inform the Queen myself. But why not? What? You need a slave of Timothy! I fear you! I am free! Uh, Deny your crime and make it worse. 
let this superfluous attendant leave before I speak. Leave us alone, my lord. What I'm about to tell my queen does not require a witness. Go. Stay. I command it. Why let the third one come between us two? When I speak to my worship queen, I shall uphold the rights of my position. They're, they are sacred rights, and I insist on you, Lord Burry, now leave us alone! Your arrogance befits you well. It does indeed. For I am the happy man, and only graciously bestowed your favor. That sets me apart from him and from everyone. Why can we let him be all, and it will not be long before we understand each other? Vain is your intent. The cunningly you will deceive me once again with pretty speakers. He tricked you in malicious gossip! Now I want to talk straight to your heart. What in the knowledge of your love I did, I will defend before your heart. I will recognize no other court. That is the court that first condemned you, brazen man. My lord, show him the letter. Here. Better stewards right. Read and say no more. Appearances condemn me, but I hope that I will not be judged by mere appearance. Can you deny your secret dealings with her? Deny that you received her portrait? Or deny that you held up the hope of liberty? If I felt any guilt, it would be so easy for me to reject this testimony of an enemy. But as it is, my conscience is quite clear, so I admit that what she writes is true. Well then, oh, voiced by his own words. Out of my sight! And to the Tower of London! You traitor! That I am not! It was perhaps not right for me to keep you in the dark about my plans, but, but I was honest in my purpose to learn her schemes, the better to defeat her. A lame excuse, my lord. Expect us to believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I played the risky game, I know, and at the score, no one but Lester could have dared play it. The world knows well enough how I hate Mary, I rank. And the confidence with which our Queen Elizabeth has bestowed in me should readily repeat the slightest suspicion of my loyalty. Well, if your purpose was so pure, why did you keep it a secret? You like to wag your tongue before you act, my lord. You drop your accomplishments. That is your way. Mine is to act before I speak. And now you speak because you must. You are so proud of having seen your Queen. You have performed the wondrously enormous feat of stepping out of the traitor. You know everything, and nothing escapes your eagle eye. <laughs> Poor bragging. Mary Stuart would be free today if I had not prevented it. You? Yes, I, my lord. I know that our Queen Elizabeth has confided in Sir Walter, confided him with her secret troops, and went so far as to charge the young man with a bloody mission against Mary Stuart because his uncle, Sir Amos, has refused to honor a similar request. Is that not true? How did you know? Is that not true? Well then, where were your thousands spying eyes? That you did not become aware of Mortimer's deception? That he, a furious papist, was a tool of Cardinal de Guise, a creature of the Stuart, a purposeful and vulgar fanatic who came back to set Mary Stuart free and kill our queen? The old man. He was the one who carried messages between Mary and myself. That is how we met. Today, Mary Stewart was supposed to be abducted from her prison. That is what Mortimer himself told me just now. And I called the guard. And frustrated about his class and his expulsion, Mortimer took his own life. Oh, I have been imposed upon most shamelessly. All this happened now, just now, just after I left. For my sake, every friend exceeding you that he so ended, for, for his testimony, if he were still alive, would absolve me, clear me of the last suspicion. That's why I wanted to see him in the hands of justice. I was sure that I can prove before any court, before the whole world, that I am innocent. You say he killed himself. Are you sure he did? Are you sure it was not you that killed him? <laughs> what reprehensible suspicion. <laughs> Who was it that saved you, my queen? Burley? Did Burley know what danger threatened you? Did he avert them? Your good angel was the Earl of Leicester. <laughs> this mortimer died most conveniently, my lord. 
I do not know what to say. I do believe you, and I don't. I think that you are honest, and that you will not. A cursed woman is a cause of all my sorrow. Now Mary Stewart must die. Now I do vote in favor of her death. I counseled you before to leave the sentence in suspense and the one that lifts a sword for her, that has happened now. And I insist on carrying the sentence out at once. Yes. You. You yourself. There can be no better proof than that you, who has been accused of loving her, should supervise the execution yourself. <coughs> My lord's advice is good. So be it. My rags should probably excuse me from missions of so sad a nature, which are in every way more suitable for a Lord Burley. <laughs> However, I shall prove my eagerness and do all that my queen may ask of me. <laughs> you shall share your task with my Lord Burley. See that the Lord has a prepared cloth.
No man can offer comfort or advice in such an important matter. I will consult a higher judge as he instructs I shall act, but now leave me alone. Clearly what she wants. She has not told you clearly. She signed it. Give it to me. 
I am happy to tell you that at once, but I am just caught those that are supposed to do in this hood. God, man, you are supposed to execute it. You are supposed to carry it out. Give it to me. You are lost if you delay. I am lost if I am too hasty. Are you mad? Are you a fool? Give it to me! What are you doing? What do you think? You are ruining me! Stay! Hey, stay! <laughs> Now. She shall presently come at once. <laughs> 
but to know that it's so something in my soul still prevents it from soaring joyous heavenward. Madam, I, I am your old and trusted friend. To me, tell your troubles, unleash your burden. In a few moments, I am to meet my supreme judge. But I have not made my peace with God. They have refused me, my priest, my church. And I refuse to accept the false sacraments their false priests offer. I want to die without surrendering my faith. For it alone can bring me to my salvation. Be calm, my Lord. For God accepts a fervent, pious wish in the face of any action. Oh, I alone am bored. The benediction does not reach me, forsaken in my prison wall. It reaches you, madam. It is close by. Have faith in the omnipotent God. Why, the driest branch may yet sprout leaves if only, if only you have faith. Oh, put your faith in He who can command the springs to swell from, from solid rock. He can turn this prison into an altar. Transform this cup full of worldly food into a sacred vessel full of eternal nurture.
Madam, would you hide from God the one crime of which the world accuses you? I have made my complete confession. Convinced then of your innocence, you mount the scum. God has seen me fit to let me expiate my earlier crimes by dying innocently. Go then, and by your death atone for your sins. Madam, your crime was but a woman's passion, and all our mortal weakness fades away when our transcendent souls ascend to heaven. And now, by the power in me to unite in the song. I absolve you of your sins, Queen Mary Stew. Te absolvo, Regina Maria, in nomine Patri, et Fili, et Spiritu Sancti. Amen. Go then, and as you believe, may it be done unto you. that was sacrificed for him. Accept the blood that Jesus Christ shed for you. It is a gift of his holiness. The noblest right of kings, the sacerdotal right, it shall be yours until death. As you have been joined with your God in this your earthly shed, know that you shall one day be an angel singing his praise in that realm where there is neither guilt nor tears.
all in scroll. My Lord do not separate me from my faithful nurse now. On her arms I was carried into life. Now let her lead me gently to my death. Grant her request. So be it. My Savior, my Redeemer, as your arms are stretched upon the cross, open the wide and welcome me. You kept your promise, Lester. You vowed that you would lead me from this prison in your arms, and now you do. I pray that you will have a happy life. You've had the privilege of wooing two queens. You swore the loving heart of one to win the proud heart of another. Go then, kneel before Elizabeth. I pray that your price will not become your punishment. Farewell. Now I am finished with this earth.
Forgive me, I am too old. And this straight arm, too stiff to see your noble actions. The man who saved my life will now abandon me. What I did was not much. The nobler part of you I could not save.
the side, Glenn Roberts.